Hi, uh, welcome to the talk. This is another uh, hidden game design mechanic talk. These hidden game design mechanic talks are kind of advanced tutorials based on the popular make your own mobile game in 60 minutes talk that I put up on YouTube. So once again, these talks are sponsored by chromacoders.org, a site and a club uh, dedicated to helping students make their own mobile games. Um, so this talk is uh, hidden game design mechanic number 85 and basically this is uh, the advanced part of uh, the Hidden Game Design Mechanic 84 talk, uh, and we're going to talk about using com combining Corona with jQuery Mobile. Um, and it's basically creating what I call these game utility apps. Game utility apps are kind of these unique or new types of apps that are one part game, one part utility. And um, so that's why we use jQuery Mobile. And what is jQuery Mobile? Once again, I would recommend if you haven't seen the Hidden Game Design Mechanic 84 talk, uh, go to YouTube, listen to it, because it'll set up the context for, for this talk, which, which talks about more advanced topics in jQuery Mobile and Corona. Um, so jQuery Mobile is like Corona for web pages. Um, jQuery Mobile is a JavaScript library that really allows you to have a lot of these nice UI interfaces and like drop-down menus, auto-complete, everything else, um, per, like in a way that's so easy to implement that I consider it like the Corona for web pages. Just like Corona makes mobile game development really easy, jQuery makes kind of making utility or mobile apps or mobile websites very easy too. Um, so, uh, so basically these game utility mechanics uh, pretty much combine jQuery mobile or something like that along with the power and the native capabilities of Corona. Um, these capabilities include photos, SMS, using the photo gallery, physics, you know, physics minigames, stuff like that. Um, and as, I've, as I mentioned in the previous uh, Hidden Game Design Mechanic 84 talk, uh, I actually made an app uh, that uses Corona and jQuery Mobile. Uh, it's an app for college students. It gives students um, the daily news on their campus. Uh, it's called Waddle, W-A-D-L-E. And you can find it on both Apple and Google uh, stores. And I used, uh, once again, Corona and jQuery Mobile to do it. And that's the benefit, is that with Corona, you've, you can make a cross-platform application that, um, is, that can be deployed on all the popular platforms. And also what's interesting is that uh, with Corona, it's easy to develop. So why didn't I use, say, PhoneGap or some of these other kind of um, cross-platform development tools? Uh, it's because Corona makes it so much fun and so much more easy to develop. Their simulator allows me to easily just test out the changes and the ideas that I want to do without having to recompile or rebuild all the time. Um, and so that's what we're going to discuss. Now, why would we create kind of a game utility type app? You know, once again, the point of these hidden game design mechanic talks is to introduce students and indie developers to concepts and ideas that can help your app stand out. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of apps now on these app stores. And really, the one of the ways that you can have a chance to succeed is creating a new type of app that is interesting, you know, that's different, but at the same time, fun and compelling. And why not blend the two things that people like, which is, you know, utilities. People do use a lot of these utility apps on their phone and games. People play a lot of games on their phone. And so that's what I call these game utility apps. Waddle, that app that I worked on, that was a mix between a game and a utility. You had the utility aspects of news, but they were game-like elements like um, rating things, voting, and all these other things. Um, and it made a game utility uh, app. And here's another example of why you would want to blend Corona with jQuery Mobile. Um, you know those browser-based MMOs that you sometimes saw on Facebook a while back or even on the web, uh, browser-based RPGs, you know, where you just see text-based stuff, well, you could implement that in jQuery because jQuery allows you to display those types of web pages. But let's say you want to take it a little st a little further. So let's say that, for example, when I click battle in your little text-based RPG, you can actually want to have a physical battle or a physics-based battle simulation, um, which you can do with Corona. And so that's the benefit of blending something like jQuery with Corona is that you get the best of both worlds. So let's go into the tutorial now. Um, you can download the tutorial by going to chromacoders.org slash gamemechanic85.zip. Um, so once you download that, um, this tutorial is pretty much going to be an advanced tutorial. We're going to show you how you can actually combine jQuery Mobile with uh, Corona Game and Native Access. And by Native Access, I mean using Corona to access the photos, you know, the camera on the device of the player, or the photo gallery on the device of the camera, or uh, of the on the device, 
or even the SMS uh, capabilities on the device. And um, so once again, that's the benefit. You're using jQuery Mobile to really streamline a lot of these concepts that you'd like to use. And then you're using Corona to access um, some of the more native capabilities of the device that adds more power to these types of applications. So once you download that .zip file, you can um, extract it onto your desktop and you should have a folder called corona-jquery-advanced. So let's, uh, let's open up Corona now um, and then just, okay. <clears throat> And uh, let's go to File, Open, Recent, okay, Open, and right, you go to that folder, corona-jquery-advanced, and you open up the main.lua, and you'll notice that uh, right now it's blank. Uh, so let's open up the file itself. Uh, go, to go to that folder, click on main.lua, go to File, Open With, and then Text Wrangler, or whatever your Lua text editor is. Now, for this code base, we're actually going to build on the code that we discussed in the uh, Hidden Game Design Mechanic 84. And so I'm just going to briefly summarize that, and then we're going to actually go into the specific steps for this part, the more advanced part of using jQuery. So like before, what we do is we create a local group. We have a background, right? And that background is just going to be white or whatever else. Eventually, you could put in your company logo or something else. And that's going to just show up when the player is opens up the app and then it's loading the web pop-up. Okay, so you do all that. Now let's go to step one, right? And step one is the pop-up options, right? Right now we're going to use, the thing about jQuery mobile is it's, you know, JavaScript library. So this JavaScript library and HTML pages are going to be loaded within kind of a web browser. What's cool about Corona is that it, it has web browser capability by using the show web pop-up feature or web view. What's so awesome about that is that Web pop-up kind of taps into the, the toolkits, it seems, of the native capabilities or browsing capabilities of both Android and iPhone. And so when you're using these web pop-ups, it's actually very robust uh, because, you know, Google and Apple have been working extensively to make sure that the web browsing experience on their platforms are really nice. And so that's another benefit of using jQuery Mobile. Another benefit of using jQuery Mobile is that you can put this HTML file that actually loads the jQuery stuff onto a remote server. So sure, you submit your initial application to Apple and Google, but let's say you want to change some stuff. You want to make a little modification in the position or the size or the, or the type of icon that you want to have or images or whatever else. Instead of having to resubmit the application, you can just change that HTML file on your remote server and voila, it's already deployed on, you know, on the player's uh, application. So that's another huge benefit of using jQuery Mobile with Corona. And that's what we do with Waddle. With Waddle, if we want to make certain changes, we want to try some experiments or see what's up, we can make those changes on the remote web pages that use jQuery Mobile without having to consistently or constantly resubmit to iPhone and Google app stores. And the benefit of that is that we don't have to wait five or 10 days to see the changes rolled out to everyone. Um, so that's, that's another benefit. So Let's go to step one here. Step one is, once again, we're going to use a native.show web pop-up. I'm going to use a web pop-up in this example because um, the web pop-ups for Corona are pretty robust right now. I would recommend actually using WebView. I've been experimenting with WebView. The reason why I'm not going to use WebView in this tutorial is because um, uh, the, the latest public release at this point, at the point of making this tutorial, which is 840, doesn't have the most robust support for WebView on Android. But they do now in some of the later bills, if you have the daily subscriptions or the daily build access, you can actually see that these web views are coming along pretty nicely. I recommend web views because what's cool about web, view, web views is that you can make them invisible. You can have multiple web views. You can do all these other things so that it makes it easier to switch between Corona and jQuery mobile and whatever else. So for example, if you have that browser-based MMO or text browser-based RPG and you want to click a button to then go into a Corona physics mini game, it's going to be easier to kind of do that with the web view. But anyways, getting into the web pop-ups for now. Um, the web pop-ups, if you look at the Corona documentation, it takes in a structure here where you can actually specify the URL listener. So for example, whenever someone presses a link in one of these web pop-ups, um, you can actually have a URL listener get sent an event. In that event, you can see what URL they pressed. 
And so what we can do is we can use that to actually say, you know what, if they pressed, if we created a special link like show camera or show gallery within the jQuery page, we can parse the URL that they clicked on and see that if it had one of those keywords, and then we can say, you know what, they meant, you know, we should now open up the native camera access or the native gallery access or whatever else it is. So, so we're going to set that the URL request thing to URL listener. Okay, that's step one. So now let's go to step 1B, which is actually going to that URL listener function right up here. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to see this, see this, delete this line, just delete that. And then at the bottom here of the function, there's another thing called delete this line. And there you go. What we've done is um, pretty much uh, enable that URL listener. Now let's actually walk through the URL listener so I can describe what's going on. As I told you, whenever a player actually clicks on a link within the web pop-up or the page that uh, is loaded by the web pop-up, it will send an event to this URL listener. And this URL listener, uh, what you can do is uh, you can grab the URL by getting event.url, right? And what we can do is we can then, we're going to also create a function here called session complete. And what that'll do is that uh, once they've actually say loaded the camera or chosen the camera photo or the gallery photo or whatever else, we're going to just reload the web pop-up. Once again, that's one of the issues with the web pop-up is that um, you can only have one of those on the screen at a time and you can't make it invisible. You can't really move it once you have it up there. And so to get around that, what we do is we close the web pop-up whenever we load the camera stuff and then we reload the page again. If you're going to use web views, you won't have that issue. Um, but anyways, moving forward, we, we got that URL and what we say is that, you know what, in that URL, uh, if there's a camera link in there, because let's open up the uh, local page. So let's go to that folder again with all the code, and you will see something called localpage.html. And if you look into it, you'll see some links where I actually have a link like ahref local page, and then I have like a camera keyword in that link. And what we're saying is that if that link, um, let's go to main.lua again, if that, if that camera is in the URL link, then you know what? That means that we show the camera. And so we have a timer perform with delay. We show the camera. And one, you know, once again, that's what's cool about Corona is that it's got a really nice one-line piece of code to actually allow people to use the photo camera. Remember though, in your build.settings um, to have the camera permission in there. Um, but anyway, so you do the camera stuff and once, once they've actually taken the photo, it will call session complete, that function that I mentioned above here. Um, which pretty much just uh, reloads the web page. Now, in the session complete, in your actual application, you can actually process the photo, you can upload it to your server, or do whatever else you really wanted to do with it. Okay, so that's camera. But then there's another thing. We can also check to see if the URL has the gallery, because if it has the gallery stuff, what we can do is we can say, you know what, we're going to do the media.show again, and this time just actually have them select a photo from their gallery. Um, what about SMS, right? What's cool about Corona is that it offers SMS capability. Well, we can check to see the URL, and because I have a special code called SMS uh, keyword here, and then I have like a way to format the SMS, I actually put something where I have like a star and then whatever message I want to do. Uh, so whenever we find out that it's a SMS type URL, uh, what we can do is I have a special helper function called split, uh, which we'll go to a little later. And what it does is it breaks up that whole string into two different, or you know, according to whatever um, kind of character that we want to split it against. And in this case, it's the star. So when we call SMS info equals split URL comma star, what it does is it creates a table, and that table will have, in the first entry, will have this, right? As, and then in the second entry, it'll have high, which is the actual SMS message we want to set. So we will get that SMS body by getting SMS info sub two, um, you know, which is that second entry in the table. We'll put it in the options um, and then call native.show pop-up SMS options. Once again, the documentation for this is right here uh, and on the Corona Lab site. Okay, so those are, you know, three powerful capabilities where we're blending kind of jQuery mobile with some of the native capabilities of Corona. Now, guess what? Corona is also awesome for making games, right? And um, let's say we want to load a physics mini game. You know, we want to blend this utility. Um, maybe you even have like a list of whatever news items and you want to play a mini game based on the news items that they've listed. Um, we can have like a little physics keyword in the key, uh, URL and we can just load a physics game. Now, I didn't actually write the mini physics game that you can put in here. Uh, I'll leave that to you to do. Uh, that's 
beyond the scope of this tutorial. It, it would just uh, extend the tutorial length of this too long, but you can just load your minigame, have the player play the minigame once they're done, just reload the web pop-up again. So, um, okay, so that's step two. Now remember that split function we were talking about with SMS? That's um, here. Um, this is where you delete this line, right, right up here, and then delete this line, okay, right here. And that's that split function we were talking about. Um, it's just a helper function. I found it on the web. You can you know, do a, a search to find it out on the web too. Um, okay, so now, that's, now let's go to step three. And step three is actually showing the web pop-up, right? Now we put in that URL listener. We processed all those different things. And what we're going to do is um, do step three and then save. And when you, see, when you hit save, now you're actually seeing that it's loading up that jQuery mobile page that's local, and it has the links, you know, because that's what we put in. Um, so if we go to step four, we go to local page.html, which actually has these links, you know, whether it's camera, gallery, SMS, physics, minigame, whatever else. And each of those kind of have a special keyword. So when you click on it, it's going to send that special keyword to that URL listener. And um, because we're on simulator, um, you can't really see how it'll look, but I guess with Corona and Mac OS simulator, when we click the camera, it actually loads the kind of camera loading thing that it would normally do. On your device, it would actually give you the option to select the, the photo or whatever else. Um, so there you go. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and this shows you how you're kind of blending this kind of utility view with um, now the potential and the power of the native devices or the native capabilities of the devices, such as the camera, the gallery, SMS, email sending, or even physics mini games. I think this really opens up the possibilities for new types of applications for Corona developers. And, and that's the goal of these hidden game design mechanics, is to show you kind of this new hidden knowledge that you can use to make compelling games and new types of games and even new types of applications. So to summarize, uh, what we did is we actually just combined jQuery Mobile with Corona. And by doing that, we are able to tap into the really nice JavaScript library that jQuery Mobile has, and also tap into all the other JavaScript developers that have made extensions for jQuery Mobile libraries. So if you want to do drop-down menus, auto-complete, everything else, you know, which I definitely used in Waddle, so it saved me a ton of time, um, you know, use jQuery Mobile. But we also combined it with the power of Corona. Corona allows us uh, easy access to the native hardware on a lot of these devices, whether it's Android or iPhone or iPad or whatever else. And um, it also allows us to tap into physics mini games. So if we want to have physics mini games or some of these other kind of game-like uh, elements in combination with the utility uh, features, we can do that with Corona. And the reason why we can uh, it's so much easier to do with the Corona versus, say, PhoneGap, is Corona has this really nice quick simulator that really makes it fun to test out these things and also uh, minigame coding and whatever else. Um, okay, uh, another thing that I want to mention, uh, if you do decide to do the physics minigame, by the way, which I did uh, kind of leave as a little uh, challenge for the listeners out there, but... When you do the physics minigame, uh, make sure you hide the web pop-up. And so here, we would actually say should load equals false. So you hide the web pop-up, have the minigame play out, and once you're done, just reload the web pop-up again, which I kind of mentioned before. So um, there you have it. Uh, that is hidden game design mechanic uh, number 85. Uh, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. I really wish you best of luck with this. I really think you can make some interesting and compelling applications with this. I'm already looking into new types of applications because of this combination of jQuery Mobile and Corona, and I hope uh, I hope it inspires something uh, with you too. Take care.